So here we are on the banks of Higgins Stream, and in this location we've had a woolen mill since 1821. So that's 196 years now, and it's been making uh, or working with wool fiber. Uh, this was the stream that powered the mill originally, and right now it's run fully by electricity. Um, the original mill building burned down in 1920, and in 1920 to 1921 they built the building that you see behind me. It is, uh, for its day, it was state of the art. We were um, working with some of the newest textile machinery during the 1920s, and we still are using a lot of those same machines because it makes a really good yarn and there's no reason to change, just to be faster and uh, have a higher speed output. Um, but the building it, at, for 1921 was a metal clad siding and a metal standing sea metal roof, making it fire resistant. We had a lot of windows and a lot of, um, uh, it allowed a lot of light to come into the building. We also have electricity giving uh, power anytime that they wanted. They didn't have to wait for the stream to be at a particular flow level before they could run the machinery. Um, they also had, for, for its day, um, uh, telephone as well as flush toilets, which 1920s was state of the art. We bring in Walt Rommel right from local farmers. This is an example of some, well, what's in the trailer just came up from a farm down the window. You know, and here's an example of wool that has had nothing done to it yet. Um, that's straight off the lamb, and we're going to package it up into these wool bags, which are about 300 pounds a piece. And these will be shipped down to a mill down in South Carolina to actually be washed. We don't wash the fiber here at, at Bartley Yarns. Uh, we're a little too close to the stream, and, and uh, we don't do the volume that would be necessary to make it efficient. So we'll ship it down, it'll just be washed and then shipped right back to us as a clean fiber and it's ready to be gone into the next stage of the process. Um, it's kind of interesting that we've got this would be enough for a tractor trailer load that'll be going out of here tomorrow. And Maine is a net importer, so we're able to get that southbound freight really inexpensively, uh, usually about 10 or 11 cents a pound for a southbound. Coming back, it's the exact opposite. It costs us three times as much money, only because it's nobody wants to come all the way back up to Maine um, and then have to head back with, without a load. So that's the, that's the clean fiber in the natural state. Um, we dye first and then spin, so our colors come, we, we use a dye house down in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they do, they take the raw fiber that's been washed and dye it into a green, red, blue, whatever colors we're making, and that comes back here again in bale form with nothing having been done to it except for the fact that it's been colored. So we're going to go across the street and we'll see the first part of the operation. Where the magic really starts to happen. We've got three machines up here, one of which is the oldest at Bartley Yarns. Our small car down to the far end was manufactured in 1881. And our newest piece of machinery here is 
this piece of machinery behind me, it's called a spinning mule. And it was manufactured brand new in 1948. It is, has 240 spindles, and all 240 spindles will travel back and forth on this carriage, and that's putting the spin in that first ply of yarn. We're able to do that because over here is our woolen card, and it is about 80 feet long, and what we're doing is taking those raw fibers and straightening them out, and we're making a pencil roll. So we're spinning a pencil roving as that first ply of yarn. It's just an example of what a piece of pencil roving would look like. Now this would be on a spool that would be continuous in length, uh, but right now it has absolutely no strength to it at all. It just falls right apart. And what we're gonna do is, with the mule, we're gonna put twist into that piece of pencil roving. And by twisting it, now we have a one ply yarn that has strength. Spinner, and this is where we're actually doing the flying. You see the spool is still down the far end. We paired up two threads all the way down. And this is spinning 40, 40 bobbins of a ply yarn. Dusting and picking was very much uh, man's work, if you will. It was heavy and dusty and dirty. A lot of lovely things around. Up on the third floor with the spinning and, and carding, because that was also um, very mechanical, very a lot of uh, adjustments needed to be made and getting greasy all the time. So that was definitely men's work. Here on the second floor, there's a lot of, a lot of not tying, a lot of meticulous attention to detail, not real strenuous hard work. And so the machines are really designed to be very simple and easy to operate. And that's why generally tend to be more of a woman's work. Uh, 
in the older building. And we have uh, people of different genders that operate all of them, so it's not that way anymore. Um, an interesting note is a lot of the seats are up on blocks, so four to six inches, and that's because they were designed for a woman in the 1920s, and, you know, they were much shorter than you see, you know, uh, we'll get school kids in and I'll say, you know, why are they up on blocks, and then well, nobody seems to know, and I said, well, I guarantee you're taller than your grandmother, so. This yarn here is actually a custom processing yarn that we're making where a farmer has sent their very own fiber and they want their very own yarn back from their sheep. Uh, in this instance, what we're doing is putting it onto a skein winder where we're going to take 40 of those bobbins. We're going to clip them on here at the beginning. And because we know the distance around the circumference, the outside of that cylinder, we just need to know how many turns to get to the yardage that she wants on each skein. In this case here, it's going to be 210 yards on each one of these full four ounce skeins. So when she gets finished clipping this on, we'll start to see this go round and round. Once the skein has the proper amount of yardage, we'll tie it off at the end, flip it around to the beginning, unclip it and tie that off, and then pull all those skeins off the reel so that we end up, once we've twisted it together, this would be a uh, five pound bag which has 20 skeins in it and it's ready for that, for that customer, um, in this case a farmer down towards Newcastle. And what I'd like to do is make sure we invite everybody to Bartley Yarns for our open house, which is this August 4th and 5th, uh, from 9 until 4 in the afternoon. There will be a tour every hour on the hour, and if it gets really busy, we'll start and have a second tour on the half an hour as well. But um, it's a nice walking tour to see the entire operation. All the machinery will be up and running, and we hope you come and see us.